What's up guys? Today we're going to be installing a leveling kit on this 2018 Ford F-150. This is a two-wheel drive truck. It'll be a very similar install on a four-wheel drive truck. So you should be able to use this video to help you on either one. Um, right here we've just got some Amazon Special billet aluminum spacers for the top of the struts. So we'll get those put on. First thing we're gonna do is jack the truck up and we're gonna have to support it by the frame so that our suspension can hang. So we'll get that done and then I'll show you guys what that looks like. All right, we've got the wheel jacked up off the ground. I'm gonna show you guys how I jacked my truck up and how I did it on the jack stand. So this is on the frame rail on the passenger side. I just basically went right behind this little cross member with the jack and then right where you have this little arrow right there where I put the jack stand on the frame. So now I'm going to let the jack down. It'll be suspended by that um, jack stand and then our suspension will be free to move up and down because we're not lifting it by the suspension. All right, we got the tire pulled off over there. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to get down here and we're going to start disconnecting some of these lines. You're going to have this eight millimeter bolt right here holding your speed sensor wire. This 10 mil bolt is going to be holding this bracket for the brake line. I'm going to have these little clips right here that are holding the ABS wire. We're going to go ahead and pull those loose. And then we're going to unbolt the caliper and hang it to the side. All right, we got our lines loose here. Our eight millimeter bolt is loose for this. We've got this wire where we've got plenty of slack in it. We uh, disconnected or unbolted this bracket for the brake cable or for the brake line. We're gonna take the bottom bolt for the caliper out. And then this is a 13 millimeter down here. The way I do this is I will take the caliper and swing it up. And then you can slide the top pin straight out just like that. Then we'll hang it up over here to the side. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna unbolt our sway bar here. We're going to need to unbolt this so our lower control arm can drop down to give us room to get the strut out. You can see here I've already broke loose our upper ball joint. Um, the only other thing you may need to undo is this tie rod. And then we'll get the jack on this, lower it all down so we can swing the strut out and get it out where we can put our spacer on it. All right, we got our sway bar unbolted. What I used for that was a 18 millimeter ratchet wrench and then an eight millimeter socket to hold the top of the sway bar while you break the nut loose and take it off. Um, we also used an 18 to take loose this upper ball joint. And I'm gonna show you how to get this disconnected real quick. Make sure you leave the nut threaded onto the ball joint whenever you do this. That way it won't fall completely out. But we're gonna take a small sledgehammer and we're gonna hit right here on the ball joint and this will pop out. Just like that. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take loose this tie rod. This is gonna be a 21 millimeter. You can either use a impact like I did or a wrench. You may have to hold the top of this uh, actual ball joint here whenever you do this. Mine just came loose as soon as I unbolted it, but if it doesn't, you can take your hammer and hit right here on this metal part of the knuckle and it'll pop loose just like the ball joint. All right, after we got our tie rod loose and out of the way, this knuckle can turn and uh, give us a little bit better access and just give us some more droop whenever we go to drop the suspension. Very important, we're gonna leave this nut on here until we have a jack on the lower control arm. So as long as this is here, nothing can fall out. But we're gonna go ahead and take loose the bottom nuts for the strut. These are 18 millimeters. Um, I used my impact in an 18 mil socket. You can use a ratchet and it'll work just as good. I'm gonna take loose these upper bolts or these upper nuts. These are 18 millimeters also. I would recommend using a ratchet wrench to take those off. And then after we get all these nuts off, we will get a jack on the lower control arm, jack up on it. We'll take this nut off and then we'll slowly lower it down. All right, now that we've got our jack underneath the lower control arm to support all of this, we can come in here and we can take our nut loose for our upper control arm. 
I'm gonna slowly let this down because this may try to fall. Ah. Now our knuckles leaned out of the way. We can lower our jack down and then fish this out the rest of the way. All right, so I'm gonna ease down on our jack and we're just gonna watch our ABS line here. Make sure it doesn't get too tight and then see if we can get some room to get this strut out. All right, so we wound up prying on the top of this to get it down and out. And then we should just be able to pick up on this. Well, should be able to. Took our pry bar, popped it out down below, and now our strut is out. All right, we've got our strut off. We've got it over here on our workbench. We're gonna take our spacer plates and then set them down on top of these studs right here. You can see we've got one side that's got little small holes and big holes that's gonna be facing up. These bigger holes are gonna be where these studs are gonna come through and we'll put our nuts on it. And then these smaller holes, we'll need to install our studs before we ever put this on. So let's do that first. All right, so we're looking at our spacer here. And as we can see, some of these holes, these smaller holes are actually threaded to take these what are turn, gonna turn into our new studs. So on these, we're gonna go to the back side where we've had, have better access to them through these holes right here. I'm gonna drop these in here, thread them in and tighten them just like that. These use an eight millimeter Allen on my kit. It may be different on your kit, I'm not sure. But I'm gonna throw a little Loctite on these, get all of these threaded in because these will be sticking out of the top kind of like that and be our new studs whenever we install these. All right, so you can kind of see what I was talking about better now. These are those Allen headed bolts. They're gonna go through the backside here and stick out as our new studs for our spacers. So you wanna get these installed before you put this onto the strut. All right, so now we've got all our studs installed. We'll take this, put it on top of our strut here. Just like that right there. We've got new lock nuts and washers. These are gonna go in these little holes right here to secure the spacer to the actual strut itself. All right, so got the strut back over here at the truck. What I did was I just fished it in and got some of these top bolts started. You can see our spacer in here now. Um, one of the steps in the instructions were to hammer out these studs to make it easier to install. I could see possibly doing that on a four wheel drive truck, but I think on a two wheel drive, I think we can push down on this enough to get these studs to go in pretty easily. So that's what we're gonna do now. We've got the top started in. I'm gonna push down on this lower control arm and see if we can get these to go into our holes. All right, there we go. That took some time because whenever you put this spacer on the top of this, it kind of flips the strut. So these studs were facing kind of leaning this way. I just had to take it back out and get a hammer and move these studs to where they were pointing more inwards so that they would actually go into these holes and line up. All right, so we've got our strut back in with our spacer on. We're gonna tighten everything up on the strut then we'll use our jack to lift this lower control arm back up and put our upper ball joint on. Then we're just gonna reconnect everything in the reverse order that we took it off. Um, pretty straightforward, honestly. Then we'll repeat this process on the driver's side and I'll show you guys what it looks like when it's done. All right, so skip forward a few days. I've got some tires put on the truck now, leveling kits on. I'm pleased with it. I'm about to show you guys what that looks like. I did want to just say real quick though, this is not the normal content for my channel, but this is. So here is my LS swapped Ford Mustang. This is my drift car. Um, give you a little look at the interior. Not gonna talk on this too much, but if you want to see more on this car, check out some of the videos that I already have uploaded and be sure to subscribe because this is definitely gonna have a lot more content coming soon.
But without any further ado, here is the truck. So, as you can see, just walking up to it, it looks a million times better, in my opinion, than the stock two-wheel drive. Um, the leveling kit really did level out the front and the rear. These are some 275, 70, 18-inch tires, um, just on the factory wheels, obviously. I think it looks great. I'm very pleased with it. There's no rubbing at all in the front. The only other thing I did to kind of change up the look of the truck was I took off this lower valence piece underneath the front bumper just to give the illusion of some more ground clearance. But yeah, I'm super pleased with it. I hope this video guys helped you out. Um, uh, at least give you a general idea of what you can expect. If you are looking to do this install of the leveling kit, and if you're on the fence, this is kind of what you're going to be left with after you put some tires on it and the leveling kit. So, Anyways, guys, if you want to see more about the Mustang, be sure to subscribe. Otherwise, like I said, thank you guys for watching. Leave any comments if you got any questions. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>